Hi, this is Dan Clark with another segment on board governance. And in this one, we'll talk about how much information a board should have. Let me, let me put it to you this way. The board should decide. And over time, what normally happens is they often, the most, the most frequent experience is boards have not specified what they want. The executives being diligent put as much as they can in the board packet because they don't want to be accused of withholding anything important. So board packets just grow and grow and grow. And if you get a couple hundred pages a month as a volunteer board member, it's going to be tough for you to comply with your requirement, your diligence requirement, to keep informed. In fact, Bob is on the witness stand because his company, his organization, failed. He and other board members are on trial because they didn't prevent the failure of their organization. Management must have put it in there. The attorney approached the prosecuting attorney, approached Bob on the witness stand. Bob looked a little nervous, and the attorney carried over there a rather large board packet, nicely sealed and, I mean, uh, bound up. And he asked Bob, is this a typical board packet for a month of information to your, you and your board members, your fellow board members. And he looked through it, he leafed through it, and he said, yes, that is typical. And he said with a little bit of pride, our executive sends us a lot of stuff so we can keep informed. The attorney then said, would you be surprised to know that the reason why your company, your organization failed, began to show a trend in the typical board packet as far back as 17 months ago. Bob was surprised and went on to say that, well, he had only been on the board nine months. And so he seemed to have a sense of calm come over him because the problem started before he became a director and he thought he might be protected. protected. Not so. What you need to do to prevent, like Bob's organization, failing without the board having a clue until it's too late, is to have the board establish what it needs and wants as a volunteer board in order to accomplish its fiduciary duty of care, in order for it to meet its legal obligations and moral obligations. What does a board want? And then tell the board, tell the executive, not only do I want these things, here's the format I want them in. Now, a volunteer board will use, should use, the executive, the CPA, and the organization's attorney for advice on how much information to get on a regular basis. And it, by the way, it doesn't matter whether it's attached to the agenda or sent before the meeting agenda packet or sent every week a little bit every week during a month. It doesn't matter if it's separate or total. And it doesn't matter if it's on paper or if it's electronic through a portal. Don't get more than you can understand and use to make your organization successful. Now, the executive should be allowed to bring a special report from time to time if it supports a proposal that the board is considering, but the executive is not allowed, make a policy that says this, is not allowed to increase the size of the monthly normal packet of information that the board will review without the board's approval. This is the information system is the board's system. Establish it, monitor it, require it, use it. If you need more information at a board meeting, ask for it. But don't allow it to become a standard part of the board packet. A lot of information should be ad hoc, just this one time. And then it sunsets. I'm a Floridian. We have a sunset law. And let it sunset for your board. If we don't ask for this report again, it doesn't come again. Know what you're looking at. Look at only what is necessary. Spend more time on strategic issues. 
That's what you can do with the time you will save. My website is danclark.com. I hope you'll go there and visit now. You will find a blog there also, which has a blog post titled, How a Board Packet Put Bob on the Witness Stand. I hope to see you again soon.